Hey guys! Today I wanted to talk about some of my favorite plants and okay, I know I'm always like, oh, I love all my plants. I can't pick favorites. These are like my actual favorites. Like if I had to get rid of every plant in my house, these are the ones that I would keep. So I wanted to talk about them a little bit, tell you why they're some of my favorites and why I feel like they're plants that you will enjoy too. <sighs> Let's get into it. This is an Ascananthus Thai pink. I got this plant as a couple cuttings from my mom. It has grown and propagated really well. I really love trailing cascading plants. I think they look really cool, especially when they get a little bit unruly, but not like so unruly that it's a mess. You know what I mean? Like an example of one I can think of that's a mess is a bridal veil vine. The leaves just get super tangled and it's kind of overwhelming in a way. Beautiful, but overwhelming. Whereas this one, you get the same full and cascading look, but in a little more like tidy of a way maybe that's not the right way to word it i don't feel like i'm constantly picking up fallen leaves from this plant i also really enjoy the fact that the new growth when given enough light comes in kind of reddish and then as they get a little more mature they fade to green i i think it's really pretty even though all these reasons are really awesome my number one reason for loving this plant is the blooms mine hasn't actually bloomed for me yet but like i said this came from cuttings from my mother's plant and hers has bloomed so many times every time i go there and this thing is blooming i like just want to stand there and stare at them because they are the brightest pink i've ever seen in a plant bloom they're like they're so pretty. They come in kind of clustered and I love when blooms like make themselves known, you know, like a bloom isn't that exciting to me unless I like can see it out of the corner of my eye. Very easy, very beautiful. The blooms are to die for. Recommend. Ascananthus high pink. Okay. Next up is Coral Fire Aloe. I've had this plant for so long. Like this might be one of my oldest plants. I was hoping to film this video while my plant was actually in bloom, but the flowers have all dried up and fallen off, unfortunately. I'll insert a clip of what the blooms look like though from when my bloomed last year. I absolutely love the coloration of this one. The leaves themselves are kind of a like bluish green and it gets these little fangs along the edges of the leaves that really, really pop. The texture of the plant is really beautiful. Like there's these little bumps down here. What I also love about this plant is how easy it is for me to tell that it needs to be watered. This one, you very clearly can see that it needs to be watered, that it's lost quite a bit of water because the edges of the leaves actually like curl upward like this. It becomes kind of a bowl and you know, the bowl looks empty. So it is empty so I give it more water. I just love vocal plants like that. I love plants that when I see it from a distance, it looks interesting, but then when I come up close, it's equally interesting. And this one definitely, definitely is. I love a plant that looks really dangerous, but I can't really keep those dangerous ones around because I have pets and kids that I don't even wanna risk them destroying themselves on the plant. And this one for as like dangerous as it looks, it's actually not at all. These aren't all, I mean, they're sharp, don't get me wrong, but they're not all too sharp that they're gonna like cause damage. Like I would feel comfortable going like this on the plant. It's not gonna do damage to my kids and I don't have to worry about it that much. <laughs> Next all time favorite plant is my Begonia Maculata YDI, which, okay, this one is a plant that I have had in the past and I didn't really enjoy, but I recently inherited this one from my late grandmother who had like a really incredible green thumb. Since she clearly loved and took care of this plant really well, it kind of forced me to like love this plant and take care of it as well, more so because of the significance of where it came from and the fact that it came from her. I, it kind of forced me to like stop and smell the roses with this plant a little bit and really pay attention to those small things it does or I don't know, just taking the time every day to really look at it and make sure that I'm like giving it what it needs and to keep it thriving. I would dislike nothing more than to lose this plant. It really has become one of my favorites. Um, reasons being, my grandma grew it to a really big size before it even ever came to me, but I love how tall and big and full this plant gets. Mine is kind of weird. It has the one really tall little offshoot and then it's kind of branching off to the side. 
I think that looks really cool. I am actually on the market for a new pot for this one because it's a little bit top heavy and I do worry about this one tipping over all the time, especially because mine has started to like bend a little bit. I, but I do really love the like sheer size volume of this plant for it just being a begonia, you know? Like when I think of begonia, I think of like really kind of delicate, small, and no, this plant gets big. It gets so big. The leaves, okay? Don't even get me started on the leaves. Ellie, like, I just think it's so crazy that a plant can do this and I didn't even appreciate it before now. I mean, I did appreciate it, but I didn't appreciate it at the intensity I appreciate it now. You know what I mean? Like looking at these white spots on these leaves every day is like one of my favorite times of day, even though it's just for like a minute or two. This plant is beautiful and there's so much to look at in this plant. So that's why it's one of my favorite ones. Of course, also because it came from my grandma and she's a little cutie and I miss her. <sighs> Let's move on to the next one. How do I pronounce that? Starting the frame here with this Pachira aquatica variegata, but. Pachira. So this is Pachira aquatica or a money tree. Um, I get so excited every time this sucker puts out a new leaf. Putting one out right now after kind of stalling out for a little bit there, I, I do really just like the form of, of this plant. It's really cool looking compared to a lot of other plants. So it does look very different from pretty much anything else in my collection, which probably contributes to why it's on this list. It's just so uniquely shaped. And every time it puts out a new leaf, it just gets more and more interestingly shaped. <laughs> Um, you know, most plants, they push out a leaf, push out a leaf. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I think since the leaves are so big, each new opening like really, really changes the look of the plant. So that's why this one is extra like exciting to me or fun to me for me to care for because every time it does that, I'm like, ooh, how is it going to change the overall look of the plant? Um, and it's been kind of fun to try to get the leaves to grow exactly the direction I want them to grow. So I'm gonna try and get this one to turn a little more this way just a little bit. It's been kind of a fun little like side hobby of mine when I'm taking care of this plant to, you know, take note of little things like that and see what I can do to improve to my liking. So actually mine is a variegated one, but I do think the green ones are like, I don't think this is a plant that's worth the splurge. If I could go tell myself in the past, I would just get a green one. Sure. Get the, get the variegated one if you want to, but I don't, think it's worth it because I mean, maybe you do better with it. I've just had a hard time keeping the variegation. So maybe that's just a me issue though. I'm gonna say this for every plant I think, but it's just true. Freaking love it. Freaking love it. So beautiful, so fun and interesting and unique. Okay, let me sit it somewhere safe. <laughs> this is another one I'm gonna have to insert footage of. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen a reel about how this plant became hydrophobic. I'm dealing with that situation now. I noticed when I went to film this video, so it's, it's being handled right now, but I will take some shots after once I fix the soil dilemma. The plant is Micrasula ovata or like jade. This is another succulent I've had for quite a long time. So maybe I do have a thing for succulents because they tend to stick around longer than a lot of other plants do. I think because they're so low maintenance. Anyway, getting off topic from Jade. I'm looking at her right here. So if I'm looking off the screen, it's because we're staring deeply into each other's souls. Um, I think the term for it is cork. I'll put it on screen, the full term for this, but when it matures, the stems do get that and they look really tree-like. As I've had this plant for longer and longer, it seems that the bottom of the like trunks are getting wider and wider, which is really cool. I, I think I really like plant shapes that are really big at the base and then kind of skinny or skinny and then big, which this plant definitely is. It looks like a straight up a miniature tree. Yeah, it, you can really like change the appearance of this plant depending on how you prune it. This jade plant is so vocal, but also low maintenance. So it doesn't require care very often. And when it does, like it's gonna tell me that it needs it. As you can see here on my plant, when it's thirsty, the leaves kind of curl. 
they get wrinkled and deflate almost and they get really flexible and like flimsy. That's how you know it's thirsty because the plant's going to plump right up once it gets watered. I've been growing it on a north window for almost two years now and I haven't had any issues with stretching. So it seems to be pretty forgiving on the lighting, although definitely higher amounts of light would be better for this plant, especially if you want it to bloom. Oh my gosh, don't even get me started. Don't even get me started. I, the blooms you guys on these are so cool. They're just like little balls of blooms. I'm really hoping one day I'll be able to get mine to bloom. That's one of my goals that I'm working toward with this plant. I don't think it's super common as a for it to bloom as a house plant, but that's what we're going for. <laughs> in this household. So we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, it's one of my favorites. The last favorite I'm going to talk about is my Cebu Blue Po- yeah. The last plant I'm gonna talk about is my Cebu Blue Pothos. And going back to the fact that I really love silvery blue leaves, this plant fits the bill. It's so beautiful. Mine probably will never fenestrate because I don't like love moss poles or that kind of a thing. I can really appreciate even in the smaller foliage, the fact that it stays so full and compact and happy, healthy, alive. <laughs> thriving, like I'm not killing it constantly. You know, some of the skinny little plants, it's a little bit harder to tell if they're happy, but Cebu Blue, maybe it's not content with this situation, but it keeps acting like it is. So I really appreciate that about this plant. I, I've just always really liked the way this has looked, hanging in different places in my house. So there hasn't really been a spot that I'm like, mm, that plant's kind of, so I think it's a pretty good one to be able to just throw into any little corner um, that you need a plant. It's able to not look scraggly or like I just moved it there once second ago you know how like it just looks good always it really does but ultimately the color is why it's on this list i've never had a plant that looks even remotely like this color wise so i know i'll always keep this plant actually we'll do one more because we need to end on one that i can show you like right here on screen so the next plant i would add to this list is my dancing bones cactus it's it's a cutting from ashley who i met through like social media she sent me this and it's a cutting from her grandma's plant so i think that's pretty cool it again is one that as it ages it gets this corking so i'm really happy that she sent me this like i really love this plant and um, it's clearly taken from like her grandma's plant is probably amazing because this is amazing and it's just like one piece of it. But yeah, as it matures, it gets the corking down the main stems, which I, I think makes it look kind of like sculptural almost. You can see mine kind of like zigzags like that. Wow, that's so cool. There's a lot of freaking sac succulents and cacti on this list. I think I'm having an epiphany right now. There's just no other plant like this. It's so unique, it's so easy. You know, it can also tolerate some neglect in terms of water um, because these little things store water. So makes it vocal because once it starts sending that water to the roots, they deflate. And that's when you know it's time to fill her up. So yeah, this is Dancing Bones Cactus. Really cool. I'm in the market for a new pot for it. Just haven't found the right thing yet, but I am hunting on all of my thrifting trips. I tell you what, so cool. And thank you, Ashley. I, I love it, I love it. Okay, so my camera died right at the end. This was perfect timing. The universe cut me off. <laughs> Yeah, those are my like long time favorite plants. Some plants that I foresee myself keeping in my collection like for the long haul, even through the rough times. Oh, and don't forget to leave those comments about what plants are your favorites and why. I would love some great plant recommendations. I really would. Um, or like I can search up the plants. That's fun too, to just do research on plants. That's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.